Britain's first motor show for cross-country vehicles has been getting underway in Scotland. Foreign manufacturers dominate the entries for the three days of demonstrations and competitions at Newcastleton in the borders. And as Michael Cole reports, BL, makers of Land Rover and Range Rover, are conspicuous by their absence. Four-wheel drive is now the only growth area in the British motor trade. 14,000 vehicles were sold last year, and not just to farmers. More people are doing this for fun, and 90 have entered the exhibition. All the foreign manufacturers are taking part. The Japanese are taking a bigger share of the expanding market, and Russian and Romanian vehicles are becoming popular. The most exotic creation is, however, British. A Triumph TR7 body on a Range Rover chassis. The Strange Rover. Like the other British products on show, it's a private effort. BL, who've seen their share of the market drop from saturation point ten years ago to two-thirds today, are not taking part officially. They have their own Land Rover demonstration program around the country and told the organisers that they just couldn't spare the time or money. BL may be justified in standing off. According to four-wheel drivers, in their particular muddy field, there is still nothing to touch the Range Rover. This may look like a California beach buggy that's lost its way, but underneath, it's all Range Rover. And even for Soviet vehicles, some Scottish potholes are just too much. you go off into a swamp. I mean, in some places, the course will be very narrow. Uh, if you do catch another competitor, you don't chance going round him unless you know the ground is good, and that's the art of off-roading, to know just um, uh, whether it's going to be good enough to go by him and so on. And the main thing is to keep the vehicle in contact with the ground. Inevitably, you take off in different places, but try and stay on the ground and drive as smoothly as possible. How dangerous is it? Not really dangerous. Uh, the physical effort is far greater than stage rallying, we've found, um, although there's not the mental strain because you're not driving for long periods. What sort of people belong to the all-wheel drive club? Well, basically, I mean, they've got to be, they've got to love, obviously, you know, rough riding, etc. Um, driving like lunatics. They've got to have a bit of money reserve as well. They must have some money in their pockets, obviously, because it can get very, very expensive. You find a lot of chaps race buggies, because, you know, they're, they're not so expensive to race. Spares are easy, easily available. Volkswagen, there's plenty of Volkswagens around everywhere being broken. Um, basically, it works out cheaper for them that way. and it's just blown up or uh, it's jumped out of drive. We're just trying to find out which. Try it. Gotcha. We 
got a few problems, but uh, nothing too bad at the moment. A lot of the ground is cutting up fairly badly where the boggy sections are. Obviously, on a piece of ground like this where you've got uh, hill moorland, you've got a contrast between the firm ground and, and the marshy ground. And obviously a farmer doesn't look for a complete circuit around his farm, he's just looking for a way in and out. What we have to do is to try and make a complete circuit. So where we cut across from one firm piece of ground to another, then we have a problem. An awful lot of vehicles seem to be getting really well bogged down. Yes, um, hopefully we've identified all the main trouble spots. The least competitive vehicles are causing most problems. Uh, not all of them are getting bogged down at every spot. More competitive vehicles are getting through okay. fast part of the track, so uh, going into the bend, it looked flat in third gear, so we took it flat in third, and there was a rut halfway around that we couldn't see, and it uh, caught in the ruts and flipped over. Turned it over. Yeah. Elaine, this is the first time you've done this, isn't it? How did it right, feel yeah. to be upside down? Um, a little bit confusing. <laughs> I didn't know that was coming or going. It was did you? very exciting, though. I did you feel it. inclined not to do it again? No, I, d I want to do it again, but a bit faster this time. <laughs> Quite a hold up here. What's gone wrong? Uh, well, this th this started off the day as a good firm track, but it's really cut through. There's probably been some old drains underneath that we've broken through to, and this has uh, re really caused us a big problem. Uh, we've been shifting a lot of stone around, and we we hope we've got things on the move again now. So, with a bit of luck, uh, we'll, we'll be ready to start shortly. Is it possible to change the course at this stage? It's a possibility that we'll get it changed this evening for tomorrow's run, but um, that would uh, take too long to do at this stage. At this stage, we've we've really got to concentrate on. Uh, getting what we have got moving again rather than uh, trying something new. Well, the sun shone for us on day one, but it didn't really shine on the club. Eventually the holes got so big and the mud got so deep that not even these vehicles could cope with it. So, on day two, they've had to start all over again. 15 times round a new course of about four miles. A bit of disappointment about yesterday, but still a great deal of enthusiastic driving today. in the way of prize money to win, is it? Oh, no, no, no prize money whatsoever. No, it's just perhaps, you know, if you're lucky, you win a cup. I mean, if your motor holds together, you can sort of get a first, second or third. Everybody helps everybody else, you know. If there's any problem, uh, uh, there's always someone willing to, well, more, more than one person willing to help you. There's loads of them around. And uh, it's just a very, very friendly club. It's like one big happy family, really, it is. Everybody helps everybody else. 